Who's that? No. I, no, no. Trying to visualise it with hair. No. Are you sure you don't recognise that person? No. <sighs> no? Who, give me a hint. You should know this person. Uh, give me a hint. Think about it. No, no. First name? Steve. No. It's me. No. Really? Yeah. It's you? I can't believe that. I cannot relate that picture to you at all. Not at all? No, not at all. Really, honestly, that does not look a thing like you. These three people, Carol Kennedy, Dr. Carl Krusenitsky and Lucy Barnard, have never met. And even if they had, it's a long shot that they'd recognise one another. All three have face blindness. And I'll take you back to this one here. Half an hour later, I show Carol my photograph again. Who's that? No idea. Imagine a life where everyone's a stranger, where you can't recognise the people you meet, your workmates, your friends, your family, and in the very worst cases, even yourself. It's estimated that one in 50 people has some form of prosopagnosia, otherwise known as face blindness. And many of us don't even know we've got it. It's hard to fully explain how someone with face blindness sees people, but this gives you an idea of what they experience. Two faces upside down are extremely difficult to recognize, but turn them right side up, and instantly we see Mel Gibson and Rebecca Gibney. What causes this is a mystery. Prosopagnosia can come either as a result of trauma, or uh, you're born with it, or a bunch of other things, but we still don't really understand what's going on. I mean, the brain is more complicated than the beginning of the universe, come on. Dr. Karl Krasnitsky has a face that most of us can easily recognise. G'day, Dr. Karl here on Triple J, answering your questions on Thursday morning, as have done for ages. But the popular science broadcaster and author may not necessarily remember yours. He's even stumped God, ain't us. by one of the 20th century's most famous faces. Not Kim Kardashian. No. OK. Um, not Kylie. No. Marilyn Monroe? Yes. Oh, OK, right. Oh, I'm doing terrifically. Wow, this is fantastic. What have been some of the embarrassing moments? Well, I was at a three-day conference on comedy writing and there was this guy I thought I knew, maybe. Then the second day I thought, oh, maybe I know him. Third day I said, look, uh, uh, do I know you? I'm Carl. And he said, hi, Carl. I'm Damien. I've just finished working with you for six months on our second series of the Sleek Geeks TV show where we saw each other six days a week for six months. And as he said that, it was almost as though there was a water barrier washing his face into indistinctness and then the water began to fade away and I could suddenly feel his face, oh, Damien, how nice to see you. But before that, his face was just sort of blurry. To try to break through the blur of face blindness, Lucy Barnard began drawing faces, hoping her art would highlight the facial features she couldn't see. I thought, oh, you know, if I start drawing people's faces, maybe there'll be something about that that just through the movement of feeling it out, I'll be able to remember faces better. So I started drawing family members and um, committed to drawing a um, portrait a day for an entire year. For Lucy, a hairstyle, a pair of glasses, a person's height can help her recognise people. But relying on facial features alone is almost impossible. It's one of the ones that I mix up. Um, nose, I know that nose. It's, um, it's Brad Pitt or Tom Cruise. <laughs>
Lucy has had this difficulty for as long as she can remember. It's really tricky because obviously I can see the features of a face clearly. There's nothing wrong with my vision. The problem is that when it comes to conjuring in my mind what somebody looks like, I just can't do it. And all I can think of when I try and picture someone is a blank space and then their hair or um, what kind of clothes they're wearing. Or more often, I think about the way they move and the way they laugh and little expressions that they make. So some of my favourite people are the ones that always throw their heads back and laugh. You know, that's the, that's, that is what I think of, that motion. So you get the essence of a person. That's it. Yeah, that's it. It wasn't until Lucy went to university that she learned what she was experiencing was an actual medical condition. As part of her neuroscience degree, she attended a lecture on face blindness. The penny started to drop. I'm like, ah, oh, that makes a lot of sense. So little things, like I always make sure that I'm the first person to arrive somewhere. Um, and also I don't look to recognise people when I go to meet people. I go to recognise someone noticing me. When you showed me that, I was like, yeah, we're going to get my eyes done. Yes. Lucy felt she had made a significant discovery about herself. But her then boyfriend, Matt Ryan, who's still a good mate, had his doubts. I think I went home and spoke to you, you about it. You were really it. excited. Yeah. yeah um, and Mr Cynic over here was like... <laughs> so you were the cynic? Yeah, because you just assume that everybody sees the world and other people the way that you do. When did you come around? When did you think, hold on, this, she might be right? When I had a haircut and she didn't recognise me. <laughs> How long have we been going out for then? I just, uh, not, years. not long, five, five years. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I knocked on the door and... Op and, and, and in opening it, obviously, Lou wasn't expecting that it would be me. And she hadn't yeah. heard me, she hadn't seen me yet before that point. And because there was this drastic change in my appearance with regard to my hair, she didn't recognise her, her partner of five years. From childhood, Carol Kennedy has struggled to recognise faces, even her own. In 1957, she had a small part as a dancer in The Prince and the Showgirl. Let's see if you can recognise yourself. Yes. <laughs> the lead roles were two of the world's most famous faces. Marilyn Monroe, alongside Laurence Olivier. I'm going to fall in love with you. Well, I'll be looking with somebody in a dark red dress with a tiara. I remember I had dark hair at the time. Carol's looking for visual cues, what she's wearing, rather than what she looks like. Uh, there I am, that. On the left? Yeah. Oh, wow. Is that you there? That's here, in front, yes, yeah. in front, yeah. But you would not have recognised yourself without the oh, visual the cues, cues again. No, the, cues. the red dress, the tiara, and the partner with the wavy hair. So every visual cue except your own face? Yes, yes, I wouldn't recognise my face. We do know that people with prosopagnosia see a face. They see all the parts of the face, but what they aren't extracting efficiently is the parts of the face that are cues to identity. Hello, Carol. Hello, Lovely Romina. To see you. Come on in. Romina Palomo is a psychologist from the University of Western Australia. She keeps a register of people with face blindness, and today she's testing Carol's ability to recognise famous faces. Oh, it's very exotic. Very exotic. No idea. No idea. Oh, yeah, Kim Kim oh God, she wouldn't be pleased. If she... <laughs> That's hopeless, isn't it? God, not knowing Kim Kardashian. Oh my God. Not recognising celebrities is the least of Carol's problems. Prince Charles. She remembers being at Melbourne Airport, unable to identify her own son. Three times he walked past me, and clearly he didn't notice me either, and. In the end, we both happened to look at each other and realise <laughs> that we were mother and son. That was a significant moment, really, when I couldn't recognise my own son. Carol's son, Andrew, also has face blindness, as do other members of her family. The latest research suggests strong genetic links. In the case of people like me, I think it's genetic. Certainly, my son suffers with this. My cousin in Sydney has a problem with recognising her friends. She says they're all elderly ladies with 
short grey hair and I can't distinguish between them. Looking in the mirror, Carol sometimes sees a stranger. This happened to me in restaurants where, you know, there's been mirrors all around and I've thought, who's that old woman staring at me? Why does she keep looking at me? And just for a few seconds, and then I realize it's me because they're turning the same way as me. But I could easily not recognize myself. Another challenge face blindness presents is watching television because the characters all look the same. For me, the hardest thing is where you've got a movie or a TV series where you've got a whole lot of people in relationships with each other with similar sounding names and similar hairdos who are continually changing their hairdos and changing their relationships with each other. I don't even try. I don't watch TV. <laughs> I don't so look funny. at magazines. There's just no point because I'm just looking at a bunch of Nothing. Oh, watching TV. So yeah, frustrating. It's, it is. It is. <laughs> I can watch an entire film, and at the end of it, you can ask me the names of people, and I just don't know because I just met a million characters. It's the same feeling Dr. Carl has when he walks into his busy office at Triple J, filled with what should be familiar faces. I smile at everybody benignly. Um, I can recognise a few people's names and I carry a little map of people's names and where they sit in Triple J. But as he's discovered today, it's not always foolproof. Hi, Lockie. Hello. You weren't here this morning. No, I wasn't. But you're here now. Yeah. But you've moved to somewhere else. I'm confused. I'm sorry. So fine. That's OK. Thank you for being understanding. It's Thank you. Around. You must be Declan. Yes. Hello, lovely correct. to meet you, Declan. Nice to meet you, Carl. You're going to be here for a while, so I'll leave your name there. May as well. Okay, yeah. You're there. You're in the list. Okay. Thank you. And if somebody says you don't remember me from yesterday, I'll I'll say the truth. And I say no, I don't, and they get really offended. But I'm I'm just telling the truth. I don't, and I don't want to lie to them. Like Carl, Carol Kennedy has developed her own techniques to overcome face blindness. Well, first of all, I repeat their name as many times as I can to try and fix that in my mind. And then I try to verbally describe in my head what they look like. Bushy hair, you know, sleek back hair, dark hair, long hair, um, maybe a woman with lots of jewellery. Have people tried to, to cure it? If there were, I'd be the first in line. Do you see yourself when you look at that? No. And even though there's no cure, that, that didn't it. stop Lucy from trying to find one. Um, one of them is she hoped her art would help make her better at remembering people. The project began by drawing one face each day. 365 faces, yep. one face a day. Yep. How hard was that? It was really hard. Um, it took a lot of time, um, a lot of persistence, a lot of encouragement. But the deeper I got in, the harder it was to give up. Did it help? <laughs> no, not at all. And now it's my turn. Lucy's cheated with my portrait, used a photograph to plot my features on paper first. The rest is what she sees. Giving you heaps of hair. Yeah, give me heaps of hair. <laughs> like... <laughs> Capture my essence. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know that it's your essence that I've got on the page. So for someone who can't see faces, how close has she come to capturing mine? <laughs> Why are you laughing? It's not even as good as a bowl of fruit. <laughs> oh, come on, that's great. <laughs> come on, that's uh, cool. Thank you. Oh, that's nice. cool. <laughs> I've got more hair, that's brilliant. Yeah, you definitely have more hair. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> so if I stood in front of you tomorrow, would you recognize me? Yep. Yes? <laughs> <laughs> I hope so. Yeah, me too. <laughs> Thanks, Lucy. No worries. <laughs>